Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Wang Automotive and uh, we're back again. Uh, I'm sure you know I'm done releasing some mods for Beam and G and you should go check those out. It'd be very nice if you did. Uh, if uh, you know if Beam and G would approve my mod for the repository. Anyway, let's get right into the video. The worst racer mods I have seen. Genuinely the ones I typically don't like on a vehicle. Uh, some are controversial, some aren't. It depends, really. I don't care what you, you know, you have an opinion, I have an opinion, I don't care. Anyway, let's get right into the first one. This one is definitely controversial. It's hubcaps. Personally, I like hubcaps. I really like hubcaps. They make steelies look better, but steelies, of course, by themselves look really good as well. But tacky hubcaps you find on AutoZone or Walmart... Those genuinely don't look that good. You know that black one with the red stripe around? Yes, some of some hubcaps I've seen genuinely are just really, really bad. So some hubcaps I'd I'd say you stay away from. Uh OEM hubcaps and like those basic ones, those always look nice. Uh there's not a single OEM hubcap really that really doesn't look that nice. Uh, especially Ford hubcaps on the newer focuses. Those are really good hubcaps. Right, second thing. Fake scoops and fake vents. Fake aero, aero in general. Or, you know, fake stuff like that. Frankly, the car industry is riddled with this stuff. All right, fake vents everywhere. Look at the Toyota Supra, for example. Just look at it. Look at it. Do you know how many fake vents are on that thing? There's like seven fake vents on it. Um, honestly... Fake vents really have just gotten oh, out of hand. Uh, they've put... Chrysler have put fake vents on the Jeep Wrangler, for crying out loud. A Wrangler! It doesn't need... It doesn't need vents at all. It's it's a Jeep, okay? It, it's, you know, it's a mall crawler. It's not going to be needing vents. But, um, stuff like that. So, uh, the Honda Civic also has vents. Uh, another horrible fake vents are those cheap stick-on AutoZone ones you find. Those are genuinely horrible. And uh, it goes into the next thing, fake things. Those absolutely massive things on a car that does not need it. You know, especially front-wheel drive cars. Some front-wheel drive cars do need wings, obviously. Uh, especially the high-performance uh, racing versions and Civics and uh, Civic Type R's and whatnot. They do kind of need wings, despite being front-wheel drive cars. But some of these cars absolutely do not need wings. Honestly, I don't think without wings. I personally don't think without wings. I'm very much a stock guy. I like stock vehicles. From the factory is usually the best. Um, but fake wings, those little tiny stick-on things that do nothing, those are just useless. You know, same thing with those massive diffusers, those canards and stuff like that, like the vortex generators. Most of the cars you see these on don't need them whatsoever. I'd actually say they harm the aerodynamics of the thing. And uh, overall, it doesn't really look all that good. Going on into number four, which is an exhaust mod. Exhaust mods in general. Fart cans. Those uh, garbage chutes they use on big trucks. And straight piping. Honestly, straight piping, I don't have much of a problem with. It's just, most of the times, you don't really need to do it. Get a, get a proper cat-back exhaust. Or get, a, like, a proper MagnaFlow or Borla exhaust. Don't, you know, weld a bunch of pipes to your vehicle and just make it... it it's loud, but it, sometimes it just hurts performance, honestly. Fart cans, obviously, I'm sure you know, they're ho genuinely horrible. So, don't. That'd be my advice. Don't put fart cans on your car. Um, they sound like, you know, dying lawnmowers and weed whippers and stuff like that. I will say those massive, just huge, like, the, the, the exhaust pipes, you can, the tips you can stick your head into that you find on these Dodge Ram trucks all the time. I've seen it on Fords and I've seen it on Chevys, but the Ram trucks always have it the largest because the Ram truck drivers usually, I'd say, aren't the smartest group of people and most of the time they're hung like a light switch but ram truck drivers are just bad in general but the, the tips the exhaust tips on these things are as large as a trash can all right 
Just, it's just rubbish. I tell you that. It is genuinely, genuinely rubbish. Uh, how do you even fit your truck in the garage at this point? Right. Instead of lifted trucks, we're going straight to the next thing, which is slammed cars, stanced vehicles. Uh, I don't have much of a, a pet peeve against stanced cars. Uh, some are very clean. Some are very well done. I, me personally, I am a flush guy myself. Okay, cars that are flush just look so good, so good. But if it's done well, it looks great. If it's done poorly, it ends up not looking so great. Uh, especially stance nation cars, you know, the wheels, the camber, excessive camber, where it's like, you know, wheels are at like a 45 degree angle or something like that. The car's scraping all over the ground. One speed bump, you have to change the entire underside of your car, stuff like that. Just anything excessive is just not really all that good. I'll be honest with you. And moving on to the next thing, body kits. <laughs> some body kits are very well. Some body kits are very bad. And some body kits from the factory are just miserable. The bad body kits, I will say, specifically the ones from the 2000s. This is definitely a uh, rag on early Fast and Furious movies, those body kits that they use on those cars were genuinely very, very bad, but you don't need it. Excessive body kits, crazy ones that just make no sense, stuff like that, I just don't, why would you spend your money on this stuff? Clean body kits, and like simple, clean body kits usually look fantastic on any car, so I'd go for that and save your money on something outrageous. And uh, of course, what do you put on those body kits? None other than those edgy stickers. You know, those plus five horsepower stickers or that weird Japanese green and yellow leaf thing or something, whatever that is. I don't know. I'd have to research on it. But frankly, sticker bombing and stuff like that, putting a bunch of stickers on your car, putting, putting an Instagram handle on your car for some reason is so popular. Nobody cares about your Instagram, all right? Nobody's, nobody's gonna look at your Instagram. Just take that handle off of there. You, you look you look like a broccoli-haired amateur, all right? There's no reason for that. But, you know, putting... I mean, stickers, obviously, done well. Most... Actually, most car mods done well look very good. Some, done badly or excessively, look very bad. That is the simple law of car modifying. And finally, up badging. This is something I don't like, personally. I don't think anyone likes up badging, actually. You know, you just don't grab a 335i and throw an M badge on it. Just, let's just don't. All right, you bought a car. It's a car. Don't try and sell it as something it's not. A buy a Camaro SS, throw RS badges on it. Let's, I'd rather you not. Down badging is a thing as well. Uh, so I don't have a problem with, really with that. You know, it's a it's part of that sleeper build. You know, you know, grab an M3, put three three five badges on it. Some I'd say would eh, let's it's fine with that. But underselling a car is a lot better than overselling it. Really, uh, putting you know a Mustang V6 and throwing GT badges on it. Let's just don't. All right. Having basic Civic, putting Type R or SI badges on those little red Honda logos, just don't, all right? Just don't do it. Please subscribe for more, because this has been Wang Automotive, and I will see you in the next video.